Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Lead Up Lightworker podcast, bringing you fun and soulful interviews with spiritual teachers with the aim of tuning you in and lighting you up. You can access all episodes of the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and TuneIn. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos and interviews all about spirituality and wellness. My name is George Lizos. I'm a spiritual teacher, intuitive, the co-creator of Elemental Healing, and the author of Be the Guru. And I'm so excited to have here with me Tanya Mar. Tanya Mar is a leading pioneer in the world of ultra-nutritious and energizing plant-based foods for the whole family. Tanya co-founded Tanya's a high-end raw cafe in London in 2014 and merged it with her established wellness company Better Raw in 2017. She is the creator of the Amazon number one best-selling DVD Raw Food 101 and author of Hay Houses, The Uncooked Book. Born in Russia, raised in New Zealand, and now raising her own family in London, Tanya has been hailed as one of the most recognized experts in the world of gourmet raw food by the likes of Vogue, Daily Mail, and Women's Health. Tanya, welcome to the Lit Up Lightworker podcast. Hello. It is so excited to be here with <laughs> I know. you. I, I love your whole look right now, just watching this. <laughs> I'm like, you're, just, you're such a feel-good bubble. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. That's definitely how I feel every time I walk into your cafe. I've loved visiting the cafe while I lived in London and trying your fabulous, ah, uh, scrumptious cakes, raw food cakes. And mm -hmm. you're going to talk to us all about that today. But before we dive into the world of raw food, I'm curious and people listening are curious, how did your journey with raw food diet begin? I came into the whole, you know, um, realization of uh, what raw food does, like basically twice in my life. The first time was completely by default and not even realizing uh, that it is a uh, raw food that just came into my life and the second time was 10 years later so when i was um, going all the way back to when i was 15 years old i was in a pretty terrible car crash i did a lot of damage to my internal organs i broke my back i still have a metal plate and screws joining my spine uh, and when i was in the hospital <clears throat> uh so they my whole stomach was so black and blue and i couldn't like I couldn't hold on to any food, everything they were giving me, everything was making me feel nauseous. And the hospital kept saying, you know, we're giving you highly digestible food, which actually makes me laugh now because I, I, I teach about digestion and that's actually something that I specialize in. Not so much raw food, but actually digestive health. And, you know, that's so funny. They're like something that's going to be super digestible for you. And that's mashed potatoes and jelly and, uh, and ice cream, you know, things like that. So what they meant is something that's easy to swallow that you don't need to chew, but actually my body knew better then, and it would just come straight back out. So I wasn't holding on to any food. I was on all these, um, you know, plugged into, uh, all, all this liquid diet and uh, to keep my uh, liquids up and I was losing lots of weight but my stomach was getting like bigger or it looked like it was getting mm. so what they found is I had a very very inflamed pancreas and it was causing a lot of issues and the doctors gave my parents a choice they said uh, you know should we cut it out or leave it in and I mean this to two parents that come from the far east of russia being grown up around uh, china korea japan and all these sort of you know all these different herbs and kind of like alternative um i get like to us it wasn't alternative but you know but now we know it as alternative healing methods and all these chinese herbs and so to my parents when they were told would you want to cut out your daughter's pancreas or not they were just like what healing options do we have? I mean, what can we try? And, uh, you know, what's going to happen if we don't cut it out? And the doctor said, we don't know. And my parents said, what's going to happen if we cut it out? And the doctor said, we don't know. Mm -hmm. So that answer wasn't good enough for my parents. They said, well, we are not cutting it out because it's a vital organ. We're going to try and find um, what we're going to do about it. So they said to me, you know, they said to me, this is going to be hard because everything's making you feel nauseous right now, but close your eyes and just think of all the different foods uh, one by one. And the first thing that comes to mind that doesn't make you feel sick, just tell us we 
going to go out of our way and get it. And so it was, it was a very difficult exercise. I still remember it like yesterday, you know, like I had my eyes closed. And like, mm. Oh, everything I was going through in my mind was like, I can't think about food. And then I opened my eyes and saw my parents' faces. And they were so desperately just waiting for an answer. And I was like, oh, okay, I need to try harder for you. So the first thing that came to mind was uh, peppermint tea, which I know now it was, you know, my body said I need mint because it's so soothing and because I was so inflamed. Second thing that came to mind is manuka honey. We were living in New Zealand and so manuka honey was the honey, like didn't really think of another example, but uh, but especially like if you if you go into the shops and you see manuka honey with you know the state factors like plus fifteen plus ten, uh, that's uh, the the manuka honey factor. So the higher it is, the more antibacterial, antiviral it is. Yeah. And my body knew at that time I needed exactly that because I also um, what happened is I didn't uh, let you know is during this healing process i had a catheter in me and it burst and spread infection through my oh, whole wow body. so again my body knew i needed something antiviral antibacterial antifungal uh, so it wanted manuka honey now but it wasn't food and i was thinking i was like oh my god i want i'm craving vegetables so bad like everything in my system says i need vegetables but i didn't know how to explain it to my parents because if I said vegetables, that get me, again, hospital was trying to feed me vegetables, but I was like, I kind of need raw, you know, I'm like, I'm cooked to death vegetables. And, um, but at the same time, I knew that if I was going to say that, they would give me raw vegetables. And that meant chewing, chewing meant movement for my whole body and movement at that time equal pain. Mm. So, um, so I said to them, I explained to them exactly that. And mama did went, oh, we're juicing vegetables. So if you need vegetables, we're going to juice them. So they bought a juicer and they just started uh, juicing lots and lots and lots of carrots. And, uh, and I just started healing and my inflammation started going away. So to cut to the chase of it, I got to keep my pancreas. I am, you know, thriving now more than I ever did in the first 15 years of my life. So, uh, so I know, I know now that a hundred percent, it was down to raw food, my healing, the way it kicked off, the way it happened. Um, but nobody recognized that at the time because we were just doing whatever we, we needed to intuitively to heal. So fast forward 10 years, I was 24, 25 at this time. And, uh, yeah, I think it was about 24. And uh, my parents, again, came across these books by Victoria Botenko. They were really uh, led towards those books because she's also Russian. She also brought her whole family over to an English-speaking country. Uh, she, you know, she, she was um, writing really beautiful books. I mean, they were all about raw food, but her writing style is so entertaining and motherly, and it's just so inviting. And it was like, there's such feel-good books, like, and they're so intriguing to read so my parents came across them first got onto the whole raw thing like overnight they came out absolutely glowing you know there's a whole story behind that i'm not going to go fully into that but i saw i mean i saw in them the most incredible and beautiful like transformation and i'm the one that went okay what have you been reading you know yeah. <laughs> Give me that book. <laughs> and, uh, and so that's how I read my first raw food book. Um, it was either called Green for Life or The Raw Food Family. I can't remember, but Victoria Botanica wrote both of them. Mm. But I just remember reading and she included lots of testimonials from people uh, that she, you know, that she dealt with, that she worked with, that um, or came across that healed on raw food. I mean, there were testimonials of people healing diabetes, obesity, heart arrhythmia, um, cancer, you know. Um, in America, they're very funny about the C word, but we can say it. <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, and, you know, and I'm reading and I'm going, oh my God, I was one of those people. 
I like I also healed on raw food and that was the first light bulb moment and that was the first realization and my big kind of my big lesson and realization at that time was wow if raw food can heal then raw food can prevent and that started off everything for me mm, what a fascinating story and it's uh, i mean now we know like uh, more and more about the healing abilities of raw food to heal as you said so many different kinds of diseases but what is it specifically about raw food rather than just plant-based cooked food that makes it so nutritious and so powerful how does well, it stand out if you think about yeah think about what happens to uh, broccoli, for example, when yes. it's been steamed, cooked, fried, whatever. So it starts to change color. Yes. It starts to get softer. You know, it starts to um, kind of lose its life. Mm. That's what it is. Another word for raw food is living food. Mm. And the reason why it's called that is because it's got all these digestive enzymes. They're natural enzymes that help you to break down uh, everything that's going through your body. So you can still eat your cooked food, all your favorite stuff, but just add on some raw food element because they will help everything. They will, um, th it's like a digestive aid. But at the same time as well, like if you think about, um, you know, root vegetables. So, I mean, if we were just to eat them raw, like potatoes or, you know, sweet potatoes, carrots, yams, whatever, um, we can eat them. They're edible. I mean, you know, in fact, potato juice, raw potato juice, it helps heal arthritis. Oh, I mean, wow. So, you know, you're told not to eat raw potatoes, but it's basically because of the starch. You can juice it. You can let the starch settle down and kind of discard that, but just drink potato juice. Uh, but um, so if, everything is edible when it comes to it being raw. But think about what happens when you're cooking it. They're actually becoming sweeter. So those mm. carbohydrates are turning into sugars. Mm. And the very first white sugar that was you know, discovered um, was many, many years ago when this dude left a whole pot of beetroot cooking and he completely forgot about it. And all the water evaporated and crystallized into sugar. So all the carbs they turn into sugars with really high heat. So that's why cooked food is sweeter. And that's why it's very easy to eat raw food, but it's very difficult to get rid of. Um, so very easy to eat yeah, raw food, but, um, but very, very hard to, um, to say no to cooked food because yes. it's literally an addiction because we are addicted to sweetness. We are addicted to sugar. Uh -huh. You know, even if we don't eat, the processed white sugar or the cakes or whatever, we still crave sugar. We still think about cooked food like a really warm, comforting meal. It's because we're sugar addicts and we don't realize that there is a whole lot of sweetness in cooked foods. So, which is, you know, not, not so present in raw foods. That makes so much sense. And now I had an experience with raw food that I only just understood when you shared this. When I was uh, in Bristol doing my, uh, my degree in geography, we did geographies of food. And one of our assignments was to go raw food for a week and then write an essay about it. <laughs> okay, so I tried to do it and I only lasted three weeks. I started, I started like getting like this uh, withdrawal symptom of cooked food. And now I realize it is the sugar that I crave, not the actual food, because I could sustain myself with raw food. Exactly. I was feeling well, but I had this unexplainable urge for something warm, which makes perfect sense. And really, but you could still, if it was something warm, so, um, I mean, I can tell you now that you're completely right. That's exactly, you know, what yeah. you were asking for. But, uh, but you can also, you know, you can also um, try and kind of trick your uh, cravings. And if, you know, if you're thinking, if it's like, oh, I really, you know, I'm living in the UK or I'm living in a cold country and raw food is really not for me. I'm not going to be able to go through with this cleanse. Uh, I need something warm. You can do warm stuff. You can do the herbal teas. You can actually pre-make like a raw food paste, you know, maybe some sun-dried tomatoes, maybe um, garlic and 
a, a few different herbs, um, and then pour hot water over it and actually stir it into a really warm soup. Because mm. if you think about it, when we do eat soup, it's not like we eat it scorching hot, you know. Yeah. We, we wait until it cools. We, we sort of blow on it because we don't want to burn our esophagus. Um, so really, we just need slightly warmed food to make ourselves grounded, happy, you know, just to um, kind of like feel a bit more balanced, especially at this time of the year. So that's totally possible. But you know, your point is, yeah, you're completely yeah. right. So the, the cravings, the real need for cooked food is all because of the sugar. And something else that I realized then was that the more, cause I got the first the impulse to become vegetarian. So I quit meat and I went vegetarian and I noticed my spiritual abilities like, a, like becoming better. My intuition was more accurate and I was started feeling, uh, receiving more guidance from my guides, from my angels. And then I, as I added, uh, raw ingredients into my diet, the more my intuition increased. So I'm curious, is there a correlation between, from your experience, like it's probably not scientific, but from your experience, is there a correlation between spirituality and raw food? Does it help us be more spiritual or more intuitive? 100%, 100%. There's, there's, there's no doubt about it. And with the, you know, it, and there are some scientific um, evidence and case studies yeah. around that as well uh just um, watching the human body and the aura around it it's you know there is so much to it like if you think about it we um how do we uh suppress our emotions mm. oh i need comforting foods you know we call it comforting foods because we're not feeling so great because yeah. we're um, feeling down or you know we've had a really bad day and it's like oh my gosh I just want to get home and I just want to have some comforting food and oh I just really need this cake because I'm feeling really bad and uh, you know so we are suppressing our emotions with comforting food mm. but over the years they get more and more and more suppressed so we became more and more clogged and and then we become kind of numb and when you are cleansing, when you are uh, transforming, I guess, your, you know, yourself on a cellular level, so much happens, a huge release happens. And with toxins come out emotional toxins as mm. well. So things that have been making you toxic is not just the food that you've been building um, inside over the years. It's everything you've been suppressing. It's, um, uh, you know, all of those uh, emotions. And so that's why people, when they do go through a detox, they don't just experience uh, detox symptoms, with a bit of a headache here and there, and maybe toxins coming out through, you, you know, your face and you're breaking out. And, um, but also people become really cranky. They, uh, they become super emotional, just, just really kind of, uh, just crazy to be around yeah. <laughs> and and you know and that is completely normal and in fact that that's not only normal that's really really good it's an incredible sign that stuff that you've been keeping inside that have been keeping you toxic is now releasing so just recognizing that and letting it go is such a beautiful process and when you do finally let it go when you get rid of this darkness this gray matter then you can finally shine. And what you're saying about intuition, for me, that was absolutely, undoubtedly, you know, my intuition. Um, I finally realized what, that I had an intuition and that I didn't just have an intuition, that it was so strong and it was so on point. And I, it made me realize, I was like, oh my gosh, there is something within me that has always been there, but now is so much louder. And, you know, and I really trusted because it, it was, it was so pronounced and it was so obvious and it wasn't just obvious to me. It was obvious to everybody around me. Oh. So when everything is lifted off, you just, you're able to shine and that shine magnetizes people and magnetizes the right people as well. That shine is a bit too bright for the people that are not supposed to be in your life. And that kind of get, slightly burnt and 
cinched and move away. But the right type of people, they absolutely draw towards you. It's, you know, um, it's a it's a massive transformation. So food is a huge tool for transformation. It's that powerful shift that we're familiar as well with like energy healing. Like whenever I do like a Reiki session or some other kind of healing with someone, I always warn them, be careful that you may go through an emotional purge. Like you release uh, stuff energetically, but now you're going to release it physically as well, which I guess is the same thing that's happening when you go to a raw food cleanse. Your body releases so much and then you're free uh, to be more fully yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to move into raw food living because it, from my experience and from my chats with people, the biggest obstacle for people to start uh, living a more raw food diet, we don't need to go 100% raw, just implement more raw food into our diet, has been the, um, the high maintenance <laughs> that sometimes raw food requires, like all the gadgets that you may need to have, like and, and having a dehyd <laughs> like, yeah, like a dehydrate, dehydrate that's more. You know. That's excuses. <laughs> so that's, that, that's why I'm asking this question, because I want you to give us some tough love about it and just a, a loving kick in the butt <laughs> mm -hmm. as to how we can make our raw food living more easy. Okay. To make a salad, what do you need? <laughs> just raw ingredients, a chopboard, and a knife. That's it. That's all you need. That's all Easy. you need. Everything Easy. else is fancy stuff. Everything else, it like if you are feeling good and you you know and you enjoy. And in fact, when yeah. you do first start, you know, to experience like uh, a raw food cleanse, I guess if that's what you wanted to do, and you know, just give yourself three days. In fact, do twenty four hours. Yes. Say twenty four hours. I can do anything in twenty four hours. Commit to 24 hours and, and just have salads all day. And honestly, in 24 hours, if you don't experience a shift, if you don't experience some kind of aliveness, mm. I mean, do another 24 hours. <laughs> but honestly, you're going to experience something. And I can tell you, people get so enthusiastic they want to do another 24 hours and then they uh. want to do the third day. And then they're like, Oh my gosh, what have I been missing the whole time? And then their priorities begin to change. So maybe later you'll get a blender, you know, but most people do already have a, have a blender. Most people do uh, have a, one of each uh, maybe, or one or the other, a blender or a juicer. And if you do, you can, um, that's a good one. Uh, I have a 24 hour cleanse on my website, tanyasliving.com. Oh, so, perfect. What's um, the website? What's the uh, yeah. link for it? Uh, yeah, well, it's just, uh, you can provide a link, but if you go on, if, if you uh, add your email to my newsletter, I mean, you get that as a free gift anyway. That one um, requires you to use either a, a juicer or a blender. So really there are two, two 24 hour cleansers all in one. And it's got a whole shopping list and it's got um, everything, you know, potential detox symptoms, like a checklist. It's got absolutely everything to make it super easy. And all the ingredients are not fancy. You can get any of them from a supermarket. So that's all there for you. Uh, you know, if you're going like, where do I start? I have no idea. Then if you want to go further, you know, you can do my, um, my uh, seven day detox program called Purified. And, um, that that requires a blender and a food processor but if you wanted to just try something without any of the any of the other fancy stuff you know don't get into the whole spiralizer and the whole uh dehydrator and you know whatever you can do it so simply with just a knife and a chopping board like you said and there are so many veggies, there are so many salad concoctions. Um, and if you want to obviously do a dressing as well, you don't even need a blender for that. You just, in, an, in a little jar, you know, put some uh, spices, put some olive oil, lemon juice or lime juice and shake it up. And that's your beautiful dressing. Uh -huh. so, or, you know, miso paste, you know, if you want to get more into the umami flavors and you want to get deeper into it, then you then you put miso paste through it, you stir it through. 
Um, then if you wanted to get more umami and more flavorsome, you know, maybe you just put some plum vinegar or apple cider vinegar or um, tamari soy sauce. You know, I don't do any kind of soy except those two, miso or tamari soy sauce, because they uh, have uh, fermented soybeans in there, which is really important because otherwise, uh, you know, this, there's a whole, a whole other spectrum of what happens to your digestion if you eat soy beans, mm. including soy milk. <laughs> mm. So rule of thumb is start simple and then as you get comfortable, add more. So light workers, we have no excuse, 24 hour raw food <laughs> cleanse, we can all do it. Exactly. And we you want you to let it. us know. You can do to... absolutely anything in 24 hours. Exactly. So I want everybody to try that and come to the video or the podcast or come into the group, your spiritual toolkit Facebook group, and let us know all about your experience with the raw food diet. Tanya, I have one last question. What's your take on organic versus not organic vegetables? That's something that's troubled me a lot this year, and I'm trying to get more organic in the new year. But what is your take? Is it equally nutritious to have non-organic foods? Um. Yeah, it's, it is a really tricky one because there are so many different sources, you know, there are, um, you can get non-organic conventional food or more like you can get non-organic foods, non-organic mm. certified foods, because mm. to some farmers, the organic label is just a little bit expensive. Yes. And so they literally like, they still sell beautiful foods. They don't use you know, sprays or they yeah. use a very minimal amount of sprays, but they literally can't afford the label because it is, um, it is really ex expensive. It you is. Know, there's an upfront cost. There is uh, an upkeep cost and, uh, and rightfully so because what the organic association, for example, what they do is they do an incredible job. They're very thorough. They, they go and they do all the checks and, you know, they require all the paperwork and they physically go, go in. So, um, there, there's a very good kind of, it's, it's very valuable. If you can go for organic foods, a hundred percent, um, do that. But when it comes to, um, non-organic foods, I personally, I tend to keep away mm. because I also have very little children. And if you think about it, what is the point of the sprays? you know, all those herbicides, all this fungicides um, in non-organic conventional produce. Well, it's to keep all the bugs away because they want to make sure that they produce food. They're able to sell foods bug free. They're able to produce lots and lots and grow lots of vegetables for as minimal cost as possible. And, you know, if bugs don't eat them, they're able to do so. But how do bugs die? Like if they try some of that food they're still attracted to it so they kind of lick the surface and that surface includes the sprays so it goes into their stomach and the stomachs just rupture but if you think about it the difference between us and bugs is just the size so if we mm. continuously eat lots and lots and lots of conventional produce that you know maybe a little bit of conventional produce is not going to do anything to us but over time all of those herbicides it adds up. Up and we start to get major issues mm. you get poisoning from um uh, conventional foods you can your stomach can truly rupture the whole leaky gut syndrome you know it's all it happens over time and having little children i'm i'm constantly thinking about them because this they're, they're smaller their stomachs are smaller so what the effect that they get from conventional produce it's is bigger. a lot quicker is yeah and and a lot more severe so um i'm always on the ball with that but at the same time you know be mindful like uh you know if you use a dowsing rod you can teach yourself yes. to use a dowsing rod you know you um go to the markets and even if they're not uh like if the vegetables are not organic certified or like you know you in cyprus i mean you probably don't even have a, a lot of a lot of things don't have organic certification i mean you just go to the markets and all the veggies are right there so with your dowsing rod you can go around and you can actually check is this like is this beneficial for me or my body will, will turn you know and you say one turn 100 percent and you know, and it will turn if it says 100%. So then you would go, it's like, okay, is it, um, you go on to the next food and you go, you know, is, 
or if it's not a hundred percent, you say, is this damaging for me? Huh. Is this heavily sprayed? So you can ask all of these questions and because uh, I mean, your dowsing rod is like, your intuition your times. connection to your intuition tanya we've mm -hmm. learned so much thank you so mm -hmm. much for such an informative interview where can people get in touch with you tanyasliving.com that's my website so that's how you can get your 24-hour uh, cleanse uh but i'm online you know you just go at tanya's living instagram facebook twitter or at better raw even though that's more kind of all about the children <laughs> these days uh but yeah at tanya's living you'll be able to get all the all the latest <laughs> thank you so much for educating us and of course i'm going to pop the link in the show notes thank you so much tanya have a wonderful well, rest of your day you. thank you so much for having me george you're so welcome thank you Bye bye <laughs>